main thing is to look at how the AI can help us in uh, in in uh, uh, in its application to prevent or screen for diabetic retinopathy. So I welcome Dr. Padmaja on, and uh, Dr. Sham and Dr. <laughs> Dr. Rakesh also, please on the stage. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, at the outset, I would like to thank Idea Clinics for this uh, excellent opportunity. And last year, we spoke about battle against blindness due to diabetic retinopathy. And uh, I think the collaboration can only be a significant collaboration that happened in the last one year that we could come up and we could actually come up with an ICMR uh, project in this one year. Uh, I'm very happy to give this update. And also at the end of this uh, session, we also have a workshop where all physicians get screened their retinas without any dilatation, uh, whether they, uh, how is their retina and what is the fundus it looks like. So this was a dream and this was a dream come true with a significant collaboration. And uh, you can see the individuals who have taken part in this uh, uh, collaboration. So when we look at the numbers, yes, all of us, we know that we are the world's most populated countries. And uh, India is, uh, China has a uh, per, uh, country which has the highest number of people with diabetes, and we are just in the second to them. And when we look at the diabetes, it's a multi-system. But I actually, act, I actually acts like a window to the systemic diseases. So when we look at the current burden of people with diabetes in the world, five, around 537 million, and 50% of them live in uh, uh, China, India, and USA. So that's how we have very developed. And most important thing is when you have diabetes, they are 25 times more likely to go blind. And when we say diabetes, it is not just diabetic retinopathy, which affects the small vessels of the retina, but they can also get cataracts. They can have more glass power refractive errors, and they can also develop a complication called glaucoma, and uh, also strokes in the eye we call venous occlusions. So all together, that is called diabetic eye disease, and they are likely to have 25 times more likely to blind than the people without diabetes. And one third of them, unfortunately, never know uh, about their disease. And uh, when we look at the nation-wise, how much is the diabetic retinopathy burden? This was a multicentric study that was carried out by uh, 20 sites together. We were also partners, LV Prasada Institute. And what we found is that diabetes percentage in India, in 20 states when we did the nationwide study, it was around 18%. And 12% uh, of them were having diabetic retinopathy. And vision-threatening diabetic retinopathy, the, uh, which can affect the vision, was around 3 million people were there. Uh, that means around 30 lakh people are there who are having, can become blind due to diabetic retinopathy. And when we do a hospital-based study, that is what we see in our clinics every day, the complications, because the people reach only when they come for, with the complication. So what we found in a nine-year uh, electronic medical study is that two, around two lakh people with diabetes entered our hospital, and among them, around 66,000 were having diabetes, uh, diabetic retinopathy, and half of them were having vision-threatening retinopathy, 50% of them, because usually when they're blind and when they're going to become uh, blind only, they will reach the tertiary care. So then what the big question is for all of us is, India is having highest number of people, uh, very sweet people, then how do we get screened for uh, whether diabetes or diabetic retinopathy? I think this is a million dollar question, and the, usually the question could be complex, but the solution could be very simple, and that is only possible when we have such collaborations which can happen between physicians and ophthalmologists, where you have a simple tool to uh, screen your retina at your clinic and uh, at the physician clinic. So that is how we uh, envisaged this project called Smart Drop. And as uh, Dr. Kalyan Chakruti said, the smart means A, enabled, and drop means diabetic retinopathy outcomes and pathways. And the idea was that we need to have a first person to, who comes in contact with the people with diabetes is a physician. 
and a physician could be uh, a, a diabetologist or a diabetology oriented physician or in a villages it could be even a uh, registered medical practitioner but what is very important is they all should know how they can actually screen for diabetic retinopathy and outcomes mm, uh, so the simple solution is to have a non midriatic fundus camera that means we don't need to dilate anything and we can just take pictures and that can be uh, used in the physician images uh, offices and then also use a so that there can be a screening at the first level that the patient has a diabetic retinopathy or not and the aim of this project was to demonstrate that an a enabled pathway can actually detect diabetic retinopathy for uh, the more than 90 percent and also very important target that we have kept is that the people who walk in into idea clinics uh, 80 percent of them will actually screen for diabetic retinopathy and establish that there is a current pathway at the lv prasad where we see patients that definitely leads to early detection of diabetic retinopathy and prevent blindness so that is our hypothesis and also we wanted to know the systematic screening uh, that is patient whoever patient comes with walks in an idea clinic or a physician clinic will get screened for diabetic retinopathy and the uh, the we uh, established a four uh, clinic uh, idea clinics uh, the fundus cameras has been established all non midriatic cameras and then we do uh, all of them we also introduced a something called vision checking because many retinopathy screenings all over the world they don't check the vision but vision actually can sensitize a patient uh, whether they there is also vision problem or not and uh, so we also introduced a mobile based application to check the vision and then we do a, a non midriatic fundus uh, photo camera screening and all these patients images are transmitted over the cloud uh, they, there is an a in integrated in all these four cameras which will tell an AA diagnosis but also all the image the AA diagnosis is also validated by the uh, image reading center which is situated in the LV Prasada Institute and all the patients who require actually treatment or any uh, problem are actually referred so this is not just a screening project this is a trying to establish a system of screening and also referral and tracking so that the patients with diabetic retinopathy get complete care and uh, this is how we have uh, uh, established the f fundus photograph uh, established and then training facility uh, to the, all the members at the IDA clinic. And we also in, uh, made sure that uh, there are a lot of awareness materials uh, making that the patient sh can, should get also the screening for the uh, diabetic retinopathy. So this has been established in terms of posters. And this is the progress so far. Uh, we have a uh, number of patients in diabetes registry in the last uh, project actually uh, officially start, uh, started in um, 11th March. So we have around 1000 diabetic patients have been entered. And one thing where we need to understand that there are factors that we need to look at that number of patients screened are around 40% uh, uh, and there is a monthly increment in the form of patients. So even though you offer a non-invasive, uh, you know, simple test, how patients will accept, we are seeing a monthly increment. And then what is very important thing as an ophthalmologist that I find is that the 90% of the images are gradable. So I, I think thanks to our smart team in the idea clinics. So th this is indicates that you need not dilate because this is a big uh, ex uh, experience for me that the need not dilate with a simple test, uh, the camera screening, you can actually have a gradable image which can tell you whether you have diabetic retinopathy or not. And we also found that there are sight threatening retinopathy. If you just see corresponding LVP arm, you have sight threatening retinopathy is more than 16, 17%, uh, whereas here we saw only around 2% sight threatening retinopathy. And we, uh, we also, as I said, this project is not just a uh, project about screening some numbers, it is about creating a system. So systematic screening. So I really uh, congratulate Idea Clinic to become a pioneer in this and then hope that this uh, model will uh, succeed in the all over the country. So we have also a target for 80% that the, all the patients who have been screened, uh, referred for a sight threatening problem also reach to the next level. And that is also again target we are monitoring. It is also around 44%. And we expect that as we move on in this project, we reach our target of 80%. So this is just one example of a 31-year-old 
uh, type 1 diabetes patient who has been uh, underwent fundus photo in idea clinics, the top two are uh, images that have happened in fundus photo, and then they have been referred, and in LV Prasad, so he, this patient has a good vision, he has a 20-20 vision, but because of the fundus feature, he came to uh, LV Prasad, and you can very clearly see that there is a significant diabetic retinopathy changes, which can cause any time the blindness. So this is the example of having a patient screen first at the physician clinic. So how probably our study smart drop can make a difference is that utilization of we are actually testing two types of what are the major fundus cameras that are available in the market and uh, we can actually give some insight into how they work. And then second is guidance on establishing effective pathway, how it can be tracking can be done, how referral can be done, whatever the lessons we are learning in the project will also give you the learning. And then uh, also Aishman Bharat actually is giving the physicians to screen per patient 400 rupees has been done. Many government programs will be there, but many of us may not be even knowing and how to implement. Probably in our project also we will see how we can actually implement those systems so that physician will be interested to uh, establish the system and it is a simple return of investment which we will discuss in panel discussion. So, and analysis of economic impact and cost effectiveness and most important is the images are actually validated by manual grading uh, which are just doing through the technology. So, the patients even need not go to the eye hospital. So, almost 80% of the patients who are having a fundus photo, they need not even come to, only 2% actually are required. More than 90% can be actually screened and given appropriate care at the physician clinic. So it's like it's going to physician clinic, going to act like a one-stop clinic for prevention of all complication and, the, and then retinopathy and, in, and also prevent blindness. So thank you very much. Actually, uh, Professor Sarang Dio was also was supposed to be part of, uh, so he left, but he had actually given us some outline in terms of how we can discuss. I, I request Dr. Bhavani also please come. And um, so I, uh, he asked us, I me mean, actually what are the, you know, surprises you had in this program? And then uh, what are your probably, where you can look at the improvement? So here I would uh, actually show one, uh, Thing because the whole project is about artificial intelligence. And uh, I'll just show one thing. So if you see, I forgot to mention, uh, if you see there is a discrepancy, we are doing all the images, we are doing grading by the manual grading and validating the AA grading that is done by the cameras, which is around 40%. So we want actually, uh, when we do an AA testing, normally when we do in a pilot testing kind of in a labs and all, it usually will be around 90%, 98%. So then actually even a machine can grade and then physician need not actually depend on an ophthalmologist to grade images. But here we can see that the level of grading is only around 40%. Still there is a long way for us to tweak these AA models in a real scenario where we are getting the opportunity in this project. And probably next year when we present actual you know interim updates of the project, probably we can tell about the AA more, whether truly our project has been AA enabled or not. So that is one uh, lesson, I would say that improvement can be read. In terms of pleasant surprise, I think last 23 years I'm there in the retinopathy uh, programs, but the quality of grading of the images has been excellent at the idea clinics. So which actually indicates that it is possible to screen patients without any dilatation at the physician clinic. So that is, I think, is a big uh, pleasant surprise and this should be actually uh, thought for every physician that you can have a camera and you can do without dilatation, you can screen patients for diabetic retinopathy with simple tests and all of you should also just check your eyes how simple it is the test and get see your retina how it is, just it takes a second to do the test. So this is one. 
and of course in terms of improvements i would say that the target we kept we thought a simple test non invasive uh, test and i thought all the patients who come in idea clinics will get the test uh, done but it is not so around 40% only were at the target but we are in the initial quarter so this is again a learning probably for us how we will improve on the thing and also the referral like four patients out of nine patients who have been side threatening four patients only could reach so again we are also improving on the referral percentage oh, thank you ma'am i want to ask you one question so uh, just to clarify that you said that uh, uh, more than about 90% of the images were gradable means that they were uh, well captured very well captured well captured but out of that you said that uh, grading was done by the ai only in 40% yes means it was attempted in only 40% or it was no 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 the attempted in all of them the but it was not grading matching. was done for almost 90% of the images for the ai yeah. but the the a diagnosis and the manual manual grading yeah. is what we are keeping so the, the it was not standard. matching you are saying not that matching. It was not matching. So, was the AI over uh, estimating yeah. uh, this so, or it was underestimating? Yeah, we looked at both. So, yeah. we looked at the patients whom we have not diagnosed as a no diabetic retinopathy. Yeah. We, we looked at both no diabetic retinopathy and also when they had a retinopathy. So, what we found is no retinopathy patients having false positive was much more higher. Wow. Uh, so, which can be actually given an un, uh, un, unnecessary tension for the patient that they have some retinopathy, but actually it is not retinopathy. Yeah. So, but in a way of looking at it is that one positive way of looking at it is that it's not missing out people who who have retinopathy. Yeah. It's picking up uh, the AI is picking up a few more uh, patients rather than those unnecessary who, referrals. Yeah. So, a few unnecessary referrals. It may mean a few unnecessary referrals, but it certainly is uh, is uh, picking up those who have who have a problem. Yeah. So, that is picked up easily. That is picked up. So, the AI seems to be working well, but it needs to be uh, need to fine tune it yes. further to sort of uh, avoid the unnecessary yes. difference. Thank you. Is it better for AI to overestimate or underestimate? See, always in a screening programs, whether it is AI or a, uh, a person, overestimating is, uh, is better than underestimating because we don't want, means overestimating, of course, it will create burden on the end user. Like for us, like for example, if they do a more uh, uh, unnecessary referrals and they have to come. See, yeah. for example, now in the one, project… One more question. One yeah. more question I want to ask is related to this only. Yeah. So, now we said that we are having overestimation. So, overestimation is again your final impression is based on the AI image or you are taking another image and uh, no, no. deciding that? No, we are that. taking the manual grading result as the no, final image. based on the, uh, the image that is captured by the camera or you are doing another image? No, no, no. Based on the image that is captured by the camera. Yeah, so now… And, but the manual grading was… is better than the A grading in around 60 percent of the cases well, right but now. Now with uh, technology, I mean we can just transfer the images and get a ophthalmologist's uh, opinion on that image. Yes. And uh, thereby that can overcome yeah. this problem of… Yeah. Uh, uh, what I would… what I… I think what you are telling is… is a kind of a semi-automated model. Yeah. So, A should reduce the burden of… for example, we see that in a physician clinic, around 80 percent will be normal. So, if the normal… if it can pick up saying that these are all normal, at least 60 to 70 percent if it says correct, you are actually reducing the burden on the ophthalmologist. So, you can actually use like a quality matter of some normal images, some 10 percent will be used as audit, but all referable retinopathy, any retinopathy image which, which has is picked been, up by AI should be, should be, should be uh, So, it's like cross a semi-automated model. We yeah. cannot depend completely on the AI. Yeah. So, as the AI evolves, we can use a semi-automatic, I mean… Better. This sort of model where we… Uh, get all of the uh, yes. pic images which are picked up as having some degree of retinopathy yes. to be reviewed by the ophthalmologist and uh, those and maybe 10 percent randomly picked up uh, yes. from the rest of the… Yes. So, I, I actually I think I wanted to ask one question is that as a physician, you know, having these cameras, do you think it makes economic sense to keep a camera in the… Uh, in your uh, clinics, yeah, because yeah. I, I, I was a strong believer patients are looking for quality care. So, wherever we use, uh, for us, there is an economic incentive both for care provider and also the patient. Patient takes time and energy to visit a doctor. In one stop, we are t screening for all organ damage and retinal screening. My impression is patients love it. And especially when we are using technologies like AI, 
they are extremely grateful to us that we are trying to and there is a, a feeling amongst them that they are also contributing towards research and uh, you know uh, so i think we got benefited in terms of the service we provide to our patients and economically i think it is uh, extremely uh, it will incentivize physicians so dr sahay i think on the national front for example the condition like this for example the project like smart drop it could be a, a small one uh, example of systematic diabetes retinopathy screening which is not uh, present in the whole india so we will have our own challenges and learnings when we do this so how do you envisage for example a fundus camera we know that it is around 3 lakh rupee investment so the return of investment probably i would like both bhavani and your views like return of investment of this establishment how we can actually envisage in a, in our clinics okay thank you thank you dr padmaja um you know the um the cost of each camera as you said varies f um, anywhere from um, 2 lakhs which is non ai to 4 lakhs which could be 4 or even 5 and some companies have got 6 lakhs um or with integrated with ai so initially uh, a physician may think actually this is a huge investment to start off with but the return of investment on it is really good each each um you know uh, funders you take a picture of you don't need to really do it for free it is chargeable and ayushman bharat actually central government is giving has sanctioned 400 rupees per each uh, funders captured so that way you do it the return of investment will be done in the next 2 years so and it is an asset for the next 10 years there is no uh, way that it is going to be depreciated at all so it is very good in terms of as dr sham said quality of care we are providing quality of care we are doing the preventive care as well as um, you know it's it's a good investment to start off with and how we thank can you. establish also physician and eye collaborations like this thank you i think RSSD i think yeah project. i think one of the other important aspects of the project is that uh, setting up this uh, referral pathway as you said because you know in spite of the fact that we have this uh, uh, this being done we still have a lot of patients who are not reaching the ophthalmologist so that is one thing which we need to look at and as you said that's the reason why uh, doing it in the physicians clinic makes it Uh, better and validating the AI models would would make it better. In fact, uh, you said you were speaking about national front also. So from RSSD also we are collaborating with VRSI to, uh, I mean, I'm you are also part of that. So to to develop a a a, uh, a protocol for for conducting this screening across the country and see how we can you know uh, do it on a on a larger scale also. So recently we come up with a physician. Uh Uh, rarsd day uh, and the vitro retinal society yeah. of india we come up with the guidelines for the physicians how they can screen at their clinic and refer yeah. and also awareness material what aware uh, idea clinic displayed were also vrsa and all india institute uh, the, we have material so all this can be displayed in your clinics and uh, you can actually visualize the camera yourself uh how it will work so quickly and then one can take pictures so in the Any next few months we plan audience? to initiate this uh, yeah. project on yes. with uh, with vrsa